Greetings, fellow Gorehounds, and welcome back to a Blood Splatter vlog. I'm the Horror Guru. And I'm Count Jacula. And today we're going to be talking about Don't Breathe 2, perhaps the most controversial horror film released this year. At least in my neck of the internet woods, it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. A <laughs> lot, of, lot, of, lot of comments, a lot of, oh... Aren't, are we are we glorifying a rapist? I'm gonna use this as an opportunity to just put a huge fucking like trigger warning thing here. Um, yeah, uh, Don't Breathe Two is a sequel to Don't Breathe, in which uh, the villainous character from Don't Breathe, uh, played by Stephen Lang, uh, tried to impregnate a captured girl with a turkey baster. Yep. Um, so yeah very uncomfortable not not to mention all the fucked up shit he did to the other teenagers in that movie yep um he is now more of not necessarily our protagonist no he's not our protagonist because he's definitely like the major supporting character yeah um he he we're now seeing him in a much more sympathetic light in this movie than we did in that movie which is going to be very uncomfortable for a whole bunch of people but think of it this way it's kind of like how in House of a Thousand Corpses, uh, we established that the Firefly family kills, rapes, and murders a whole bunch of teenagers. Yep. Um, without remorse. And then they're the main characters of the next movie. Yep. And we follow them, and we start to empathize with them, even though they're still fucked up people. It's kind of like that. Yeah, yeah, it's very, <laughs> it's very, very much like that. Um, or a movie like Maniac, where you're following a guy who's just killing a whole bunch of women and he's our main character and that's where we're following yeah it, uh, I, I would even put like uh offspring and the woman in that category sure you absolutely know? because if you if you see that character in offspring you're like that's a weird cannibal yep. woman who has like an old slave gimp on a leash yep <laughs> so my point here is the movie does not make him into a good guy no he's just better than the bad guys for lack of a better way yeah. to put it he's better than the antagonists I, sh I should put it that way yeah um basically what this movie does is it kind of does a lone wolf and cub slash the road slash the last of us thing yeah um where uh one of his drives in the first movie was that he had lost his daughter and he wanted to get a daughter he wanted to get a kid back um, and in this movie, we find out that it's been eight years and he has apparently, yeah, he's apparently somehow, found somebody. Yeah. somehow acquired a daughter, most likely not through good means, but he has acquired a daughter and he's been training her to survive the way he survives. And we end up in a situation where would be organ thieves try to kidnap the daughter and take her organs and he must fight to protect her and stop her from being uh, organ stolen organ harvested. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> stop her from being harvested. Um, but I want to stress this. She's the main character, yes. not him. She's the protagonist. Yeah, yeah. That's why. That's how the uh, the Last of Us fucking compares. Yeah, to really. Particularly like you go with like Last of Us Two. You're like, oh no, no. She's the main character. She's the main character. It's her story. He is the. He is simultaneously an antagonist in that story and also a supporting character in that story. Um, and we we do get to understand him a little bit better and partially learn to empathize with him as this movie goes on, but in kind of the same way you do with the characters in The Devil's Rejects. It's like yeah. they're humanized by their connection to one another, but they're still awful people. Yeah, yeah. You know? Like, it's not... The movie does not ask you to forget that this guy's a yeah. fucking murderer and a rapist. And so the reason why I bring all of this up is just to say, if that is like a fucking line in the sand for you, then just avoid this movie. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. This now, movie exists in a moral gray area intentionally so. So yeah. Uh, another important thing to remember, uh, since we're at this section of the video, a dog dies. Yes. Yes, um, a dog does die in this and it is heartbreaking and I cried. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Um, the, he may be shitty, but the dog is not shitty. Yeah, poor dog. Yeah, you're like, hey, he's dog. just a pupper. No. Oh. Um, um, but now that that's all being said, I gotta say, I love the fuck out of this movie. Oh yeah, it was really good. Um, it, really it good. continues the same combination of thriller action horror that the first movie had, but amps up the action element 
more so than the other ones. Oh, right? definitely. Yeah. And it does do that thing that like, for example, Hard Candy did, <laughs> which is it gets you to sympathize with some of that maybe you shouldn't. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. But, but the, it, you know, but like Hard Candy, it's sort of like, by the way, don't forget. Th that, that's the thing I really loved about this movie is that it keeps reminding you and pointing out what an awful person he is as it goes on. Yeah. Like yeah. it doesn't want you to forget that. You know, there's even a point uh, what later on in the movie where he just flat out spells it out. Like, yeah, like, yeah. Like, like I, I, I am a murderer. I am a rapist. I am a monster. Like, you yeah, know, like yeah. he just flat out says it like, you know, so the movie does is not unaware of this. It's not trying to whitewash him. That's very yeah. important. <laughs> yeah, this is this is far more. This is far more a, a thought about like, well, wait a minute. What if the guy got his way at the end of the first movie? Yeah, what would like, happen? What would happen? Yeah, you know, if he did actually somehow manage to get another daughter, get that kid. What the fuck would happen then? You know, and that that's exactly what this, this movie, movie feels goes. like. That thought experiment. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Um, it's intense as fuck. It's Dude. brutal. Yeah. Holy shit. Like, I, okay, this this might have had some of the most brutal kills I've seen in a horror movie all year. Like, Ew, this, it, yeah. Like, when that yeah. one dude got his face smashed in, I was just like, Jesus Wow, God. okay. I, uh, I, I was not expecting it to cut back. I know, <laughs> I know. We were you're just kind of expecting it to be like, ah, and then right before, like, the payoff, like, they cut back. His blood splatters on his face or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you watch him fucking just mangle this uh, dude. And that's just one of many fucking brutal fucking murders that happen in this movie um, after some intense action fighting sequences. Yeah, and I'm, th I'm looking at that thing, and I'm like, look, whoever made the dummy that they smashed <laughs> in that fucking scene, <laughs> dude. Oh. Props. Hell yeah. Holy fuck. That looked shit. real as fuck. <laughs> yeah, it did. It you, did. You, you know you fucking succeeded when you got a room full of horror fans that went, oh, oh Jesus. Shit. You know? All in unison. <laughs> like jaded ass fucking horror yeah. fans that watch brutal, gory movies all the fucking time. And you got them to react that way? No, you nailed it. Oh yeah, no. You, you it was, nailed it. It's a great effect. They did a great job. Um it also like like one of the things I really loved about the first movie was just its it's it had such masterful suspense the first movie oh yeah and yeah. this movie continues that trend like, yeah and it actually made it, it actually like takes it to 11. it does there's like a five maybe six seven minute sequence that's all one single shot of the girl trying to evade uh, all the home invaders. Yeah, yeah. In a two-level house, it's a staircase involved. And I'm watching this thing, and I'm going, how? This must have taken forever. Well, here's the thing. Uh, there are points in which they could have hidden cuts. Yeah. Um, like, there are points in which it, like, like goes past, like, like a lamp or something like that. And you're like, right, you right, hidden, yeah. Like, you couldn't hit the... You can hide it, kind of cut that way. You know, but I, but what I loved about it is I could never tell exactly where the cut was hidden. Yeah, if there is a hidden cut, you don't, can't find it. You know, and, and, and if there isn't, then just fucking props to them, because this sequence was... Okay, this sequence was the most suspenseful shit I've seen all year. Like, I'm sitting yeah. there, and I'm like, oh shit, the camera's still going. Oh crap, they're gonna find her. Oh no, she hit over there. Okay, yeah. cool. And I'm, just, I'm like, I, I realized there was a point halfway through this five fucking minute sequence where I wasn't yeah. breathing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's a sequence that involves like five characters yeah. all moving around a house at the same time. Yeah, yeah. and it's the house from the first movie too, so you got all these layers. <laughs> <gasps> like, yeah, that, that, that was, Thinking about what it took to actually get that shot, like, was kind of mind melting. Yeah, how to get the shot, how to plan the shot, how to choreograph the shot, everything. Like, yeah, because you're sitting there, you got, you're like, well, it had to be like, <laughs> it, it had to be a held camera. Yeah, like it had to be. There's no, there's, there's. There's no way you could move around some of this furniture yep. with like a fucking arm or a dolly or a, or a foley or something. Like there's no fucking way. I'm sitting there going like, I did not expect this movie to have a little mini children of men happening in the fucking I know, moments. I know. Like that's one of, well that's one of those shots where you're like, dude, this is a million, this is like a million dollar shot mm -hmm. in like, a, a, a fucking five hundred thousand dollar budget movie. Oh God, yeah. You know, like Jesus Christ. 
Um, and on top of that, like, like it, because this one's a little bit more action oriented than the first one was, you get some legit good action sequences in this. Yeah. Like they're not quite on like the level of like the raid, but they're just as brutal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, like th th they're only working with like five people like yeah. on screen at any one time, unlike the raid. <laughs> My only criticism of that is that by ramping things up to the level they did, this movie does require a lot more suspension of disbelief than the first one did. That's definitely true. Like, it, like it's a little <clears throat> less grounded. In, you know, it's it's violence is a little less grounded and a little bit more fantastic. And, and also, what what Stephen Lang's character is capable of feels a little bit less realistic. Yeah, it's like it, he's he's basically at this point, it's like okay, he's basically got Daredevil power. Yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> like. Well, because what really fucking like 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 made me go like, all right, now now I'm starting to question like like whether or not he could actually do anything like this is there's a point in which we move from the house to a new location, and it's a location that he's not familiar with, but he moves about it the same way he does the house, like he knows where everything is. Yeah, and that yeah. was like a little like I don't know. I don't I, know about that. I feel like even a fucking trained Navy SEAL badass like him would still be bumping into doors he doesn't know are there. You know? Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, like, you know, like, wouldn't he, like... Or at least would have to, like, feel around a little bit more so he knows the layout of the fucking room. But, like... Yeah. Like, 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 there's a little bit of that. There's also a little bit of, like, him surviving things he probably shouldn't be able to survive. <laughs> um, there's definitely one point in the thing where he just flat out gets lucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like... Holy yeah. shit. You know, it's so like, yeah, this definitely required a lot more suspension of disbelief, so just be warned about that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, but like, like, in the end, though, I love the movie so much. I didn't mind that, you know, oh, like, because yeah. we are going in this more action oriented, like direction. Um, it being a little less believable was OK for action in a way it's not for horror. Yes. You know? Yeah. <clears throat> Agreed. You know, it's like it it, it it does kind of reach. It starts reaching commando level. Yeah. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, it made especially funny because they make it very clear that these guys that are harvesting the some of these guys that are harvesting the uh, the organs are also ex military. Yeah. And so you're just like, oh, I feel like they should be they should be putting up more of a fight than the fucking teenagers. teenagers but, did, yeah. And to a certain extent, some of them do, but not all of them. Not all of them. Some of them <laughs> just go out. And there are definitely some things that like fucking happen in this movie that was. Well, we we look. We really just want a scene where this happens. Yeah, you know, we there was a couple. Really want there was a couple moments where I'm like, you put that in there because it's cool. Cool. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, but what I really, what I really liked about this movie, um, beyond all that, is I'm a huge sucker for those lone wolf and cub, cub stories. The story yeah. is about like the, yeah. the aging monster who's found some semblance of his own humanity through like their their connection to a child. Yeah. Um, and this movie does that really well. Like, I was actually surprised because I thought that that was going to be lost in all the action horror stuff, but they yeah. actually fucking kind of nailed that narrative. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I, I think a lot of that's just due to Steve. Yeah. You know, he like... Fucking, like, he, he... That motherfucker. I know. That motherfucker, like, with the most limited amount of dialogue possible, will fucking get everything across in just a couple looks. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Like, oh, man. You'll watch him go through an entire fucking, like, like an entire play of emotions. Yeah. Well, it's, <laughs> a, it's so weird. Like, the before these movies, the thing that I remember him the most for is standing on the deck of a fucking ship drinking coffee while blue people are being Oh man, he, oh, he's the best part of Avatar. Oh dude, <laughs> oh dude, like I'm watching that and I'm like, this guy's such an asshole, I love him. He was a you great know? villain in that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, was, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was sad they didn't give him Cable, but um, uh, well, uh, yeah, Roland, yeah, did, the a Roland did a great job. Yeah. Roland did a great job, although I would have loved to have seen Steven Lang as Cable. Oh, he would have been great, especially watching this movie. You're oh, just yeah. Like, oh, man, he would have been great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, it's, but it's weird because I feel like maybe they went with Brolin because Steven Lang could actually make Cable very, very serious. That's true. Like, he For could Jack actually do it extremely dramatically. That's not true. That, not that Brolin couldn't, but you also know that Brolin can do funny. 
That's true. Stephen Lang can do funny, but his funny almost comes from playing the character serious. It's really yeah, exactly. It's exactly. very interesting. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I can see that. So uh, Don't Breathe 2, it is uh, currently available on various streaming platforms. Um, it was in theaters, now it's on streaming and stuff. Um, uh, yeah, I recommend it. Like, if you're the kind of person who loves these more morally gray action thrillers, like if you like movies like The Wild Bunch, and shit oh, like yeah. that, like movies where you're not following good people, or The Hateful Eight. Yeah, Hateful Eight's, oh yeah, if you like The Hateful Eight, you'll probably You know, if you like those movie. movies where, where, where you are capable of watching a movie about a bad person and recognizing they're a bad person while being entertained by the movie, then you should probably get something out of this movie. Yeah, You'll probably definitely, enjoy it. definitely. You know. Um, so uh, with that said, let's move on to the spoilers. So, uh, okay. Uh, this movie does have a lot of spoilers. It, it does, it does. Because one of the things I really love about this movie is that it actually fucks with you as it goes on narratively. Like, you you think it's going one way, and then it goes this way, and then it goes that way. Yeah. You know, because, like, the first thing, I when I described the plot of this movie earlier on, I said that it was a couple of uh, organ thieves yep. that are trying to steal the girl's organs. Well, that's what you're led to believe at the yeah, beginning of the movie. Yeah, that's actually not what's happening. Not what's happening at all, because it turns out Stephen Lang uh, got this girl, Phoenix, I think's her name in the movie. Yeah got this girl after a meth lab burned down and she was found outside of it like 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 uh, uh passed out and yeah. he just t took her home and then started raising her and the leader of the organ thieves it turns out is her father and he like got out of jail recently from the burning of the meth lab that he got in put in jail yeah. for and uh uh he he uh uh, through series of events that we see in the movie, he finds her and is trying to take her back. So we're led to believe that this is about a father trying to take his daughter back from her adopted father, who technically just kind of picked kidnapped her off the, her. Yeah, yeah, technically kidnapped her, and is refusing to let her go outside because uh, he lost a daughter before, so he's being super overprotective. You can't meet anyone. You can't do anything. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So she's got these two these two dads. Um, but one thing that's made very clear about the dad that's coming to get her is that he's not a good person either. Not because he fucking had a meth lab, but because we watch him fucking kill the one friend she had. Yeah. For no goddamn reason other than she was there. Yeah. Oh, well, worse, th worse than that. See, this is how you know that this guy's really no good. Which is, at some point, um, he's, like, gonna burn Stephen Lang inside the house. Oh, yeah, yeah. And his buddy's like, dude, your dog's in there. Because, like, he, he, yeah. Yeah, he has a dog with him. And he's sort of like, nah, that dog's dead already. And he's like, dude, that's fucked up. He burns the place down. You're like, oh. And oh. had he succeeded with that, that would have been the second dog this motherfucker killed over the course of this movie. God damn it. God damn it. Yeah. Motherfucking dog killer. So, yeah. dad that's come to take her and is actually rightfully her dad, shitty person. Dad that has found her and raised her so far that she loves, but is frustrated with, also a shitty, a shitty person. person. <laughs> Especially as she discovers all this through all these series of events that happened in this movie, because she didn't know that she was uh, basically kidnapped. Yeah. <clears throat> she thought this was her father. So you have that, and then you have the... Then the, that, That's not the twist of the movie, Yeah, that's though. not the twist. There are more fucking twists, because you're, you, you, get to the, you get to the point in which a guy successfully takes his daughter after Stephen Lang um, has killed a bunch of his men, and, and they burn down the house and leave him in it. Um, <clears throat> and we're introduced to the girl's mother. Yep. Who's in a wheelchair and is sick. And for some reason, at the establishment, at, at the building that they're living in, uh, she passes by the uh, organ transplant guy that was on the news earlier on in the movie in the yep. hallway. And you're like, oh, okay, so they are in the organ game. That's that's what they do. They just didn't want her organs. No, they did fucking want her organs, it turns out. Yeah. Because it turns out mom is sick and needs a heart transplant, and they're willing to sacrifice the daughter to get it because she would be a direct match for her. Yep. Um, now, this also required a little bit of suspension of disbelief for me because I don't know 
how well a child's heart would transplant into an adult, an adult, wo yeah. adult woman's yeah, heart. Yeah, she's supposed to be like 10. That was a little bit of suspension of disbelief, but I was also kind of operating under the assumption that this guy was just doing it because he was going to get paid to do it, and it probably wasn't going to work anyway. Yeah, yeah. Because they yeah. had a fucking jank operation oh there. yeah 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 it's like this guy's this guy's the, one of the jankiest street docs so like this movie fucking takes you on these twists and turns and you're like oh shit new dad actually is bad but what i actually really love about this movie is that at the very end of the movie um she gets away from both dads yes and uh ends up going to a shelter which is the rare case in which just going to a fucking children's shelter is more ideal <laughs> um yeah like I, I said, I said early on in the movie when she was romanticizing about like playing with the kids at the shelter, where I was just like, "Oh man, you know your childhood's bad when you're romanticizing." When you're romanticizing the shelter, a fucking shelter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> in America. And the thing is, you watch the movie and you go like, "You know what? I understand why." Oh, yeah, no, you that don't is question better. <laughs> why. You don't fucking question why. Like the thing, <laughs> the thing that's really interesting is that. Man. Uh, okay, first of all, I didn't... Here, here, Here's a spoiler for you. It's sure. a very weird one. I wasn't expecting it to turn to Star Wars at the end. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where you have that, like, Death of Darth Vader moment. Yeah, at the very yeah. End. I'm like, I'm watching, and I'm like, wait, are we doing that? We're doing Return of the Jedi. We are we're doing Return <laughs> of the Jedi. Yeah, yeah. Like, what the shit? Probably the most iconic, like, last-minute redemption moment. Well, yeah, there's a reason you don't have a character saying the line you already have, because yeah. everyone's just going to go, Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. But in this movie, they were like, nah, fuck it. <laughs> Let that shit ride. Okay, so you have this moment at the end of the movie where ambiguously... Okay, you, you think that Stephen Lang's dead, but then the, like, mid-movie mid credits give you, like, maybe he's alive? But it's really ambiguous. Yeah, it's, it's very ambiguous. Yeah. Mainly what the mid credits taught me is that the uh, other dog is the, alive. Yeah, the second dog still good. lives. Good. Yeah. You didn't need to kill the two dogs. That would have been too much. Yeah, they killed the first <laughs> dog just to make sure that you thought that this <laughs> other dog could die at any moment. Yup. I think it's like the opposite of save the cat. Kill the dog, then everyone knows that shit's going to go. Yeah, away. yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Because, like, because the Stephen Lane character saves that dog. Yep. You know? Like, he does. He does. <laughs> Um, uh, the, God, there's so many great moments in this. Like, the fucking... The fight with the guy in the fucking basement, the big fucking heavy dude. Oh, yeah. Where they... It's, it's this great fucking setup for a scene where she's hiding in a safe box. Guy is flooding the safe box with water to try to flush her out, so she has to open the thing Yeah, so out. she has to open it, because you can only open it from the And he's also set up a fucking electric line so that when the water gets high enough, she's going to get electrocuted. And... Uh, Stephen Lang's character is fighting him in this basement and he's put this gas canister and released all this gas in the room so that they can't use the guns. Yeah, they can't use the guns and if the electricity goes off, yeah. same difference. Exactly. And so they're like having like a fucking fist fight in the goddamn basement and this guy like dwarfs Stephen Lang so he's like throwing him around oh, and yeah. shit. And this is brutal. You're yeah, watching there's a, there's a point where you, you're legitimately like is Stephen Lang just gonna bite it in this scene? Oh my god, is yeah. Is he gonna just die here? I legit, Because this dude is fucking tearing him apart. I was I was legit wondering if the movie was gonna pull a bait and switch and he was gonna die right there and then we're gonna follow the little girl. Yeah, 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 exactly, <laughs> exactly. You know, for a moment I thought that was gonna happen because he was getting fucking beaten down yeah. in this scene. Um, and this scene ultimately culminates in him sparking the thing and blowing up the guy and like saving his daughter by dumping the water out, um, which was also another moment of suspension of disbelief because I was just like, that. How are you gonna tip over that thing? That thing had to have worn. Wore... That's gotta be tons. Yeah, it has to weigh a ton without the water and the little girl in it. But you add the yeah. water and the little girl in it, man. That's... Man, that's gotta be. Yeah. I was just. Yeah. I don't know, man. I don't, I don't... Yeah, I don't know how much leverage. Like you can get on that. Maybe shit. if you looked like The Rock, I would buy it visually. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I wouldn't. 
Yeah, no. But like, <laughs> I wouldn't believe that. It would be hard for me to believe Dwayne Johnson. But here's the thing. That. Even though I had that moment of suspens suspens suspension of disbelief, I was still 100% enthralled in the scene and going like, no, save that girl, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the, that's the, that's the trick of the action movie is to get you so invested and in wanting to see something happen that you just sort of like all the other shit. The only way you can save your soul as a human being is if you save this little girl. Yeah. The one good thing you do in your <laughs> life. <laughs> I'm a, I, I'm a, defy laws of physics I'm a sucker for that so like it was working for me <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> um, and there's a bunch of other really awesome sequences like there's, there's a there's this one weird um, uh, there's one really cool moment where he takes out four guys with a gun by pretending to be asleep <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> pretty great yeah. And that's when the turncoat guys are just like, oh, they're going to kill a girl up there. Yeah, they're going to kill a girl. I'm not cool with that. You know, yeah, just go. Like, go. Go oh. get him. Also, he didn't say it, but I was also like, yeah, and they also kind of shot at your dog. Yeah. So, like, yeah. Yeah. Fuck him. Fuck, him. <laughs> fuck that dude. Um, I also like the moment, like, the, the whole the whole fight at the end next to the pool. That, that was when I was really thinking about how, like, I know that he's a trained Navy SEAL. But, but how does he know that pool is yeah, there? How yeah. does he know the exact area of that, the exact setup of that room so that he doesn't fall into the fucking pool? <laughs> no idea. I have no clue. Um, but it does lead to some really awesome moments. Um, people do go splat in the pool. Oh, yeah. But you also get this great moment where it's like, where he's fighting, the, the two dads are fighting, right? Right. <laughs> now, now you'll see what I see. And he fucking gouges <laughs> his eyes out. out. <laughs> that oh was great. God. Also, that there's also also a scene where like the um the, the mother in the wheelchair has got the girl handcuffed to her, mm -hmm. and she pitches over into the pool, and it, to try to fucking keep from being dragged into the pool, which is like really, yeah. really like ridiculously deep. I'm like, this is the deepest fucking pool I've ever seen. I know. I'm like, I'm just saying, it's like. Pool's like what? Yeah, you know, twelve feet. Okay. No, it's like 30, 40 feet. I've deep. seen pools that deep, but usually they're bigger pools and not one of those smaller pools. Yeah, they're not usually <laughs> indoors. Yeah, you know, like anyway, there's a great scene where this girl is like taking, trying to cut her the mom's arm off with a machete. <laughs> I only have one thought in that scene though. I was going like, okay, I know you're like panicking in the moment, but I, I feel like you'd get more out of this if you sawed instead of trying to chop the same spot but you keep missing <laughs> yeah yeah probably probably i mean yeah. i know bone's hard to saw through but like yeah it's also hard to chop through <laughs> yeah well yeah i think i think maybe if the you're a girl is... if you're a little girl doing it with one arm doing it with saying. one arm while also <laughs> like hanging off a pool and yeah, shit. yeah yeah oh well oh, whatever whatever you know <laughs> Um, God, man, I don't even know what more to say about this movie. It's fun. It's a good movie. It's yeah. it's fun. It's dark. It's fucked up. And, um, it, like, Stephen Lang's character isn't redeemed at the end, but you do feel like on some level he saved his soul, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Like, whatever the metaphorically saved his soul. You know, he's not redeemed in the eyes of the audience, but, like, in terms of his own peace. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, which is pretty damn cool. Um, yeah. I will totally watch a sequel, though, about, like, the little girl, like, kicking ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would, too. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if that's gonna ha that kind of shit. That was the happen. one thing I was a little sad about, was that, um, while we do get that awesome sequence of her, like, hi hiding and running from the guys and stuff, I was kind of hoping that she was going to utilize a little bit more of the training she was getting than, than she just Yeah, died. yeah, yeah. It really only happens, like, twice in the movie. Yeah. You know. You know. We'll see. Um, so, yeah. Window. Don't Breathe, it's really fucking good. Yeah. Uh, don't Breathe too. it's really fucking good. And again, if you cannot tolerate a character being this bad of a person and not necessarily your protagonist, but the hero of the movie, so to speak, um, then just don't bother. It's just, yeah, yeah. Stick to the first Don't Breathe. You'll have a better time with that. <laughs> um, and uh, with that said, where can I find you, Count Dracula? 
in your closet while you sleep. No, um, you can actually find me on Twitter. <laughs> At Counting Jack. Um, you can also find me on Twitch. Count underscore Jackula, where I stream twice a week. <laughs> Thursday and Sunday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And you can also find me on Instagram at Static Jackula. How about you? I'm going to hurt you real bad when we get inside. <laughs> <laughs> um, y'all know me. I'm the Horror Guru. You can find me on Twitter, on Twitch, on Instagram, and Facebook. Just look up the Horror Guru or Blood Splattered Cinema, and I'll be there. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that notification bell so that you're notified of my videos immediately upon their upload. And if you would like to help out either of us more directly, be sure to check out our Patreon pages. And remember, if you decide to go the Patreon route, even a dollar a month can go a long way. And uh, if you made it this far into the vlog, then um, what was that thing he, uh, he said at the end? Uh, the, the Star Wars quote? Hashtag you already have. Yes. Yeah. If you made it this far into the vlog, then I want you to comment below and be sure to comment below. Hashtag you already have um, so that I know you watch this vlog all the way through. And with that said, my fellow Gorehounds, uh, peace out and uh, I'll catch y'all later. He breathed. Zero stars. I know, he breathed, man. Zero stars. <laughs> Wait, I actually forgot that awesome scene where he fucking super glued the guy's mouth shut. That yeah. Was, that, that, yeah. I like that. Yeah, and the guy like they fucking took a screwdriver to the guy's fucking cheek so he could breathe through it. That's pretty you good. know what this movie did? It got me into the same mindset of watching the Friday the 13th films where like half the fun is the weird ways people die. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, that's actually that would. Yeah, 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 yeah. Huh. I hadn't thought about it like that, but it, yeah, you're right. Yeah.